Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday morning. So here we go again. All right. So Ben Franklin once said, never put off until tomorrow what you can do today, right? We've all heard that comment. And a lot of us take that to heart, especially people that go to work, okay? You know, you go into the office and the boss expects you to get your work done for today, not go, eh, I'll do it tomorrow. <clears throat> you keep saying you're going to do it tomorrow, and eventually you're looking for another job because the boss says, you ain't doing it. Now, most of us aren't lucky enough to have a job that pays three times the national average, gives us about six months vacation, you know, and God knows, free food, free medical, etc., 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 right? <clears throat> well, if you want one of those, Go work for the government. You know, it's funny, the uh, job numbers that came out here a few days ago and Biden out there touting, oh, look at all these jobs I've created, yada, da 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 Okay. If you go down and break the numbers down a little bit, all those jobs Joe created, almost all of them are part-time jobs. Okay. And, you know, so people can go out and get their second or third job. You know, it's great that you've got two part-time jobs working 20 hours a week. You're working full-time, right? 40 hours. Except neither one of those jobs comes with benefits, so you don't have any sort of retirement plan. You don't have any sort of medical insurance. You get to pay for that yourself. Not if you work for the government. We showed in the latest numbers that we lost 35,000 manufacturing jobs. But we gained 51,000 government jobs. Joe's creating jobs. Okay. This is straight out of the Soviet Union playbook. That, hey, everybody works for the government, right? Because the government is always so good at making money. You know, again, please tell me what product the government ever makes, has ever made that turned a profit. I mean, I know the government makes a lot of wars, but, yeah, that, those aren't exactly profitable. At least not for you and me. For Nancy Pelosi and, you know, Mitch McConnell they are, but not for you and me. But so we get into the working for the government and not doing your job. Welcome to Congress. You know, everybody had a whole lot of optimism here a few weeks back when Mike Johnson was made the new Speaker of the House when we got rid of Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, I think the honeymoon's over. Because if you didn't know, remember when we were trying to pass that budget and spending and everything like that a month or so back? And, well, we'll just kick the can down the road and we'll make it last, you know, another six weeks. That expires this Friday. And so now Congress would have to come up with a new spending plan. What's Mike, Mike Johnson's idea? Let's do another continuing resolution. We'll just kick the can down the road again until February 2nd, and then we'll figure it out. So we just continue with Nancy Pelosi's spending plan. You know, the spending plan that's given us this absolute crazy insurance, or insurance inflation that we've seen over the past three years. So we kicked the can down the road because, well, you know, we go on Thanksgiving break this week on Friday. Okay, so you're going to go take a couple of weeks off so you can come back for a few Christmas parties so you can go take another, another few couple of weeks off. And then by the time you finally get back to business in January, then you can worry about another continuing resolution inevitably that you're going to ramrod through at the beginning of February. All the while, Americans are toiling two or three jobs, dealing with ridiculous inflation, you know, crime, invasion on the southern border, you name it. But go ahead, take your vacation, okay? You deserve it. You've worked so hard. The work that's being done, like, hmm, I don't know, 
let's impeach Mayorkas because the southern border is a absolute catastrophe. Nah, we don't want to do that. We don't want to upset the apple cart. You know, he's fine. Just let the people keep coming. You know, and it's hilarious that now you're saying, look, they're self-deporting. The Venezuelans in Chicago are going back. See, it's not that big of a problem. Right. Go ask any of the people that live in Chicago how much they like this. Okay. They've been screaming bloody murder to get these people out. And finally, what helped them was Mother Nature, not Uncle Sam. Okay. This is the kind of crap that we deal with. In any other job, the boss would fire the employee who's not doing his job. Why in the freaking world haven't we done this? Why aren't we do, planning on doing this next year? Everybody forgets who the boss is of these employees in Washington. It's us. We're the boss. We decide who works and who gets fired. And yet, come fall, everybody be like, well, he's got a D next to his name. He's got an R next to his name. I'll vote for him right? That's how we get long terms of AOC, Ilhan Omar, Eric Swalwell, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell. I mean, somebody explain to me Mitch McConnell, for example, here. His approval rating is under 10%. Means less than 1 in 10 people approve of his job. And he gets reelected every time. Ow! Okay. I mean, this this is this stupidity. When everybody comes up and says, oh, elections don't matter, it's not worth it, it's who counts the votes, it's yet. Well, you know what? Somebody's got to count the votes. But if you don't vote, okay, then what's the point? Of, who cares? You're the problem, not the solution. This is what I keep saying, okay? Fine. You know, the Democrats have made it real easy. Vote by mail. Give your ballot to somebody else and let them take it to the precinct, whatever. You know, all these people that are whining, oh, it takes too long to vote. Okay, Christ, you can do it from your bathtub at this point. But this is the, this is the deal, guys. We've got to take our country back somehow, some way, and get rid of these people that don't do their job. I mean, there's all this uproar lately from the left about we can't elect Trump. He's going to go in and, uh, you know, start persecuting and prosecuting liberals. Good. <clears throat> I support him for doing that. You know what? While he's at it, start persecuting and prosecuting the Republicans, rhinos, okay, that don't put this country's interest at point number one to take care of. Why the hell are we still spending money that we don't have on things that we don't need? We don't need to be supporting Ukraine. The rest of the world has pretty much already said Ukraine lost. Okay, Ukraine should have lost 18 months ago. That war should have lasted a couple of days. All right. Sorry, Ukraine. You don't do anything to help yourself. Don't expect us to bail you out. I mean, we've already sent you hundreds of billions of dollars and got us nowhere. We suffer for it because the cost of everything here goes up from all that borrowed money and printed money. But, you know, hey, I'm hoping Mrs. Zelensky's latest shopping trip was was enjoyable. You know, as for Israel, Israel, hey, we give you $8 billion a year or whatever it is. You're on your own. Taiwan, if China comes in, tough toenails. You're on your own, okay? There's a story out <clears throat> lately that Americans, that we all know about the, uh, the the military falling short of their recruit recruitment goals by 25%, okay? No big deal there. Do you blame the kids? I don't. I mean, first off, we have enough kids that are fat slobs, lazy, drug addicted, you know, idiots that couldn't join anyway. But the ones that can, most of them don't want to. And honestly, I don't blame them. Because, hell, you join 
active duty, the reserves, the National Guard. You know, you got to deal with all their woke bullshit. And then what do you do? Well, you're going to be sent off to some foreign land somewhere to fight a war that means absolutely nothing to the United States except a few politicians who figure they can get rich off of it. No. Okay. Sorry. We don't need to be sending our troops overseas. Hey, South Korea, deal with the DMZ on your own. Hey, Germany, defend your borders on your own. Hey, NATO, defend your borders on your own. You know, you talk to people and a vast majority said they wouldn't join the military because they don't want to be sent to a foreign land to fight a war that doesn't matter. But a vast majority will fight to defend this country. Again, it goes back to my belief ever since I was 15 years old and knew much about politics at all. We need to start practicing isolationism. Screw BRICS, screw NATO, screw everybody. We are the only self-sufficient nation in the world. They need us. We don't need them. It's time we fix this and rightfully take back our country and defend it at all costs. Pinball out.